Hey everybody, Kristen Carpenter here, host of the Channel Mastery Podcast and founder and CEO of Verity Brand Communications. Take two, this is the second in a series of, well actually it is the second part of a part of an episode series that we're doing at Verde, um, specifically on providing resources for specialty brand communication during the coronavirus. So this is the Channel Mastery Podcast. And last week I did an episode on how consumer behavior is evolving through the crisis. That was part one. And this week is part two. So I'm here to present that to you live. And I said take two because I literally just recorded this Facebook Live about a half an hour ago and the sound was a little wonky. So I'm just gonna drop in and do it again really quickly. And uh, then I'm gonna go ride my mountain bike. And I hope that you get out of this beautiful Saturday. It's April 11th of 2020. So great to be here with you today. All right, um, for our newcomers, I just wanted to quickly let you know, Channel Mastery exists to provide the best resources, leaders, and trends to help specialty business leaders successfully win the attention, minds, and hearts of their brand fans and target shoppers. We study consumer behavior changes and preferences every week on this show and have for about three years now, which is crazy. We exist to level the playing field for the artisan brands comprising our audiences. So. Again, this is the fifth episode in our special series of COVID-19 content, and a very sincere thank you for joining us again. And I wanted to also thank Verity Brand Communications, the presenting sponsor of the Channel Mastery podcast. Um, it's been really awesome to see that the work that we do at Verde for our clients is growing more and more important every single day through this crisis. You'll learn in today's show that the bulk of consumers today are expecting not hoping for, expecting their favorite brands to step up and help affect positive change and support during the COVID-19 crisis. Brands are literally the new hubs for community today, and there is a great power and responsibility that comes with that. So, VerityPR.com. Verity exists to guide our amazing clients to be of service to their communities in the most genuine and on-brand way. It's what we've always done for 19 plus years, but it's what we're doing now and rising to the occasion to do even better during this crisis. The entire Verde team is rallying right now, not only for our clients and for each other, for our communities of the industry and those that we serve. And we're adding to our COVID-19 resource page every single week, sometimes more than once a week with this podcast and additional content at verdepr.com. Right on the homepage, you'll see a slider where everything is located just for you. All right, and again, just because I'm a formal, former journalist, um, it's important that I put a timestamp on this episode because the news cycle is changing so much in the COVID-19 crisis and now the recession that we're in. Um, today is Saturday, April 11th of 2020. All right, on to today's episode. So in the first episode last week on April 2nd, I went live on Facebook and we dropped an audio show of that last weekend. So today is Saturday, the 11th of April. The audio will drop on this on, I think, Monday, the 13th of April on all of the podcast uh, subscription platforms. So you'll be able to find the audio there. But in the first episode I did last week, I offered a foundation for us to consider where consumer behavior might be heading. It's obviously really difficult to discern that because every week, sometimes multiple times a week, things change with this crisis that we're in with COVID. But in that episode, I shared research with you that considered how we are wired as human beings to survive things like pandemics. I presented these mechanisms and matched them with the coronavirus pandemic, again, to give us a foundation that really doesn't change very much, kind of how we have evolved as humans and the tool sets that we've developed around that. I pulled great information from Professor, Professor Scott Galloway's awesome new podcast, The Prof G Show. He interviewed one of his esteemed colleagues at New York University, Dr. Haight, Dr. Jonathan Haight, and it's a great, you know, that was a great reference, very timely. Um, resource rather. <clears throat> and then I also uh, added in some analysis from a 2009 Harvard Business Review article called How to Market in a Downturn. There's a lot of really interesting information from 2008, 2009 on how consumers reacted to the Great Recession. I realize it is not at all apples to apples, but 
<clears throat> excuse me, it does give us a good comp from which to build a foundation where we can manage risk more appropriately, I think, as we're looking at how consumer behavior will evolve, evolve through this crisis. So this week's episode continues on the research path because, again, we don't have a crystal ball, but we do have a lot of current research that has come out. So we're going to dive into the most recent Edelman survey published March 30th, I believe, maybe 20th or 30th, but the end of March of 2020, Edelman pulled together a special trust barometer series on how consumers are trusting brands in the coronavirus crisis. Super timely. Um, and then we finished today's consumer behavior episode by examining consumer buying patterns by demographic captured in late April 2020 from The Visual Capitalist, um, a site that we love at Fair Day. Okay, before I drop into the research and context, I want to anchor the episode in our conversation by revisiting a societal trend that we've covered a lot on the Channel Mastery podcast, specifically a show that I did last September in 2019. All of the links will be at channelmastery.com under this episode and also at veritypr.com on that resources page for COVID-19. So that's where everything will be. So for about a year, we've been seeing a lot of articles and research about how consumers view their favorite brands as things they want to self-identify with and also a place where they congregate as community. People self-identify with brands instead of how societies and cultures used to self-identify. That would, like our parents, our grandparents, et cetera, would use government institutions or religion, et cetera, to join in and have an identity around something that said who they were right? Today, we're doing that through consumerism more and more. And this was true before the pandemic and recession that we're in, but I will tell you, it is so much more. Every single day of this um, coronavirus epidemic or pandemic, that becomes more and more true. So the most important thing to remember as we go into today's episode is People believe what they want to believe about themselves by buying from, supporting, and proudly wearing logos of brands that they love. Brands are a super important part of people's identities, and that obviously is super powerful. Specialty brands with a purpose and a genuine brand story are literally able to enable a consumer to believe a story they have in them, their heads about themselves. Literally, I buy this brand, I believe this about myself. I'm wearing one of my favorite brands, the Leadville Race Series. Um, that makes me believe something about myself. So you're kind of getting the idea. You live this yourself, I'm sure. And as consumers, you and I, we are consumers, as well as business leaders, um, we have a ton of choice. And we get to vote with our dollars to basically support, again, how we want to self-identify. We also believe more and more that companies are a better bet for us to create change that we want to see than government. With that growth comes great responsibility and um, more risk for sure. So we've been reporting in on all five of our coronavirus special podcast episodes that brands today have their ethics on public display. So being a great corporate citizen is not only important because it's the right thing to do, it's also important because People have ways of finding out if you're not being a great corporate citizen today, and they will share that far and wide. They basically will do that if you're doing a very good job or a very bad job or pretty much anything in between, actually. But just keep in mind, poor corporate citizenship plus the reach of social media equals no bueno, okay? People literally feel that they can affect change through the brands that they love, that is very, very different from our parents and grandparents and government institutions and religious institutions, et cetera. It's a major shift in our global society. And that's what the Edelman Report examples. And for nerds like me, it is a treasure trove of awesome information. So I am going to jump in now to some key statistics from the Edelman Trust Barometer Special Report, Brand and Trust in the Coronavirus Pandemic, dated March 20th of 2020. So the number one thing you need to know as a brand leader, as the coronavirus continues to evolve in our world, again, is that you have great power and great responsibility with your brand fans today. And that also includes your workforce and close stakeholders. And that's what we've been touching on all throughout our five series of content on COVID over the past five weeks. So the first and foremost statistic I wanted to share, 
Now this is a global survey, okay? And I think they had, I, I can, you'll see in the show notes, you can see the breakout of the group that they surveyed, but 81% of survey respondents said that a brand doing the right thing right now is a deal breaker or deciding factor in their brand buying decision. So right now, meaning what they're doing during the COVID-19 crisis. 78% said that businesses have a responsibility to ensure their employees are protected from the virus in the workplace and do not spread the virus into the community. So that's the flattening the curve that we've been talking about. Super important, and it is key for you to pin your COVID position or stance or statement on your social media, as well as on your homepage of your website, if you feel that it's something that from the nature of your business is important to do. Um, that is something that would be important to do right now for a lot of brands. <clears throat> so 62% so that our country will ma not make it through this crisis without brands playing a critical role in addressing the challenges we face. And again, this is a global survey. So people around the world feel like this about their governments and their consumerism in terms of the brands that they buy. And here's something that was just outstandingly strong. <laughs> One in three people who took this survey have punished brands that have not done well in handling the coronavirus. And this is squarely the shaming culture that we've been referring to in our weekly special episodes here on Channel Mastery. This is a very serious thing to consider in terms of doing the right thing as a corporate citizen. And I think mindfully communicating that out to your audiences, both internal workforce, close stakeholders, and your audiences that follow your brand. Um, this looks different for every brand. It has to be on brand and not out of kind of the scope of how you handle your brand messaging. My point is make the right decision in terms of doing the right thing. Lead from the facts and only communicate with the facts. And then be humble in how you put that out there. You never want to be like propagating your brand about how awesome you are because you're doing X, Y, Z about COVID. It's more just state the facts so that people have a place to look where they know the accurate information is. Today, that is your home website or like wherever you have your content hub, um, wherever people can actually read the true real story. And in most cases, it's at the brand's website today. Okay, so I only have a few more to share. 89%, which is a pretty much huge amount of people in the survey, said that for a brand to keep their trust, the brand must shift to producing products that help people meet the challenges that they're facing during coronavirus. Now that's kind of interesting, isn't it? We talked a lot two weeks ago about how people are coming together and how the companies that are shifting and doing the right thing, excuse me, it's allergy season over here in Southwest Colorado, um, but Consumers are definitely uh, feeling good about brand stories that they're reading about how their brands are actually supporting the coronavirus. And they're also wanting to share that um, with their communities, with their families and friends, et cetera. But just keep in mind that respondents, so consumers who responded to this have basically said that they are going to trust brands more that have actually shifted resources to producing products that help people meet the challenge of this. Interestingly, on Tuesday, April 14th at 11 o'clock Mountain Daylight Time, I'm leading a panel for snowsportsindustries.org, so that's snowsports.org, as well as the Outdoor Industry Association, outdoorindustry.org, and we are hosting a panel together where we are talking just about this, and I'm going to give you details on that at the end of this Facebook Live today, but keep in mind there will be an all-star panel talking about this, about how they're pivoting, and then I'll be there to talk about how to communicate about that. So super excited about that. But that ties right into that 89%. That's pretty incredible. And then here's another thing that it ties into as well, the same thing. 90% of the people who responded are insistent, their words, not mine, on seeing collaboration between brands and government to create forward progress through crisis. Not only does that hit the collaboration piece that we touched on last week, but it ties right into this panel that we're doing on Tuesday in just a few days. 83% want brands to be gathering points to connect people through this crisis. Now, everybody, this is really important. This has been a standing thread uniting all of our content in the COVID-19 crisis content that we've produced at Channel Mastery 
And it is so, so important for specialty brands. This is the biggest thing in this survey for our specialty brands in terms of knowing now factually that you need to keep communicating with your communities. You need to keep being right there, show up consistent and offer them updates, offer them what you're doing, share content of people and brands that you think are doing a great job. This is the time to serve. This is not the time to go dark. You want to consistently serve. What that will do for you is endear your audience to you, tie them to you from an ethical standpoint, an emotional connection standpoint, and ultimately set you up to move through this pandemic and the ensuing recession and into recovery because you will have an audience that is identifying with you, that is warm, meaning you're nurturing them, and they are literally at the ready and standing there by you as you go through this. And then once it's time to transact and be more selling focused, they'll be right there. But we are going to have to evolve that when we get to that point. And we are definitely going to help you with that here at Verde and on the Channel Mastery Podcast. So keep in mind, nothing's going to be the same after this. Consumer behavior most certainly will not be and the way that you communicate to your consumers most certainly will not be the same either. We are going to have to step through this carefully and I will be there with you every step of the way because this fascinates me and I am dedicated to helping specialty brands through this. Okay, just a few more. These are, I think, the final two and they are the toppers. <laughs> as, as of March 20th, 2020, Key consumer behavior captured in this Edelman survey, here are two of the most hard hitting statistics. 37% of the people reported that they've recently started to use a brand because the innovative or compassionate way that that brand has responded to the virus outbreak. So they have discovered a brand, possibly through seeing it in someone else's social feed or hearing about it on media outlets, et cetera, and what that brand is doing. It piqued their interest. They wanted to support the brand because of what that brand was doing, not because of the amazing things they make or offer, but because of what that brand was doing to support people through this crisis. That is incredibly important information. And the final statistic is 65% of respondents to this Edelman survey said how a brand responds to this crisis will hugely impact if they buy from that brand going forward. So, Edelman is a very, this uh, trust barometer product from Edelman is a very trusted sentiment marker analysis around trust. It is very, very important. Um, it is very legitimate. They are always on the front end of uh, watching trends. And I just really can't point out enough how you respond as a brand to this crisis, to your internal workforce, to your close external stakeholders, and to your broader audiences how you engage with them, what content you provide, the messaging, how often you're interfacing with them, how human you are to them. This is going to set you up for a relationship that is emotionally driven and connected going through and beyond this crisis and the recession. I cannot emphasize that enough. And every single thing that we've put together from Verde and the Channel Mastery Podcast all of these five episodes of content touches on that. So make sure you check out the framework in the very first episode. All of the links will be together in the show notes for this and at verdepr.com's resource page. Okay, uh, there's a lot more in that survey, 28 pages, I believe. And the link is in the show notes. And before we head out for the day, I'm gonna try something new here and I hope it works. Um, but I wanted to go to that visual capitalist um, overview that I promised and I'm going to try and share my screen. Let's see what happens. I hope it works. All right. We are now going to look at this. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. So visualcapitalist.com. This came out four days ago on April 7th and it is media consumption in the age of COVID-19. I thought this was super interesting and I wanted to show this to you because I just love the infographics. So look at media consumption for Gen Z. So I have two of these Gen Zers here at my house, a 14 year old girl and an 18 year old boy. And I can definitely say 
that online TV and streaming, video games and online videos are by far what's pulling them together to their media right now. Um, and when I say pulling them together, I mean that is how they're staying social and keeping themselves entertained and of course, attending school, right? Pretty obvious, but um, here's millennials, 24 to 37 years old, online videos, 44%, and online TV and streaming, 41%, and music streaming, 35, online press, 36, respectively. Not too much in terms of surprises there. And then there's Gen X consumption, 38 to 56 years old. And you can see this one I don't agree with because I really don't watch a lot of broadcast TV. Um, not that it's all about me, but I just, I don't know. And I just don't, unless you count Netflix or Apple TV, and I guess that is there. So yes, I guess that's true if you're counting it that way. Online TV and streaming is kind of where I would have put that instead of broadcast TV. So yeah, I'm actually going to stand by what I said before, and I don't agree with the broadcast TV so much, but that's what their survey yielded. Online videos, obviously super important. YouTube, I totally agree with that. And I guess online press, maybe not like broad market, but more endemic for me. Um, and then Boomer, 57 to 64 years old, basically broadcast TV. Pretty interesting. Online TV and none of these are the other two biggest. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to share that with you. I thought that was really cool. And I also wanted to share, this is VerdePR.com, our COVID-19 resource guide. I also um, just want to invite you to join our newsletter list because we're putting out more and more content as the days go by as well. So with that, I'm going to go back and hopefully I can turn off the screen share. However, if I cannot do that, Let's see, I think I might be back. Well, I hope I am. I'm done anyway, so hopefully you can see this and I wanted to just share with you again how grateful I am to have your time, to have you in my community at Channel Mastery. And also, I wanted to let you know that we are even offering hourly consulting now at veritypr.com. If you go to our website, you can see the tab right there. That's not something we normally do, but we're doing that to make ourselves available to people who really need help right now. You're also welcome to send me questions to channelmastery at veritypr.com, or you can hit me up on LinkedIn at Kristen Carpenter. I think that Twitter, I'm, well, I'm in the process of changing my handle there, so I'll get back to you. But just know I'm really looking for more questions. We are really here to serve, and it was great to be here with you today. Thank you so much, and I will see you next week. Actually, today's Saturday the 11th. I'm planning on coming back on Facebook Live on the 16th of April on Thursday. So I will see you then. Thanks so much, and have a good few days. Until then, and head on over to snowsports.org and outdoorindustry.org, and you can sign up for the COVID-19 webinar that they're jointly producing that I'm hosting, again, on personal protective equipment and how companies in our spaces are pivoting to manufacture for that. And I'll also be providing information on how brands can communicate around that. Thanks so much, everyone. See you next time.